Hello, and welcome to Excel Church's YouTube channel. Here you'll find Bible-based teachings from Pastor Derek Rains designed to help you excel in God and excel in life. Log on to excelfl.org to learn more about us. And if you feel led to support this ministry, you can do so by clicking the link in the description box below. You can also partner with us via text to give by texting the giving code and the dollar amount of your contribution to 904-201-2022. Now, let's get into the message. Well, once again, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight to receive the word of God. I want to thank everybody who's joining in on live stream. I declare that your lives is blessed, and I thank you that the word of God will reach even you. Uh, before I get started, I want to give a honor to the set man and woman of God of this house, Pastors Derek and Zephyr Reigns, our beloved pastors, <laughs> my spiritual parents. Uh, they send their love. You know, they're getting refreshed. Uh, they'll be back in the pulpit on Sunday. He wanted me to let you know he loved y'all and he can't wait back to get to y'all and preach that word. You know, I want to also give an honor to my wife and my son. Got my son in service with her. I think she, I think she made him come. <laughs> but I uh, want to give an honor to him. My little son ain't here, so honor him too. And I want to give an honor to all y'all for coming out and supporting, you know. Um, God is good. And, and God will be edified tonight, you know. So we go, we go get right into it. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm just going to start off and just say a little bit about me um, uh, because I know, you know, to some I'm known, but to some I know a, a lot of people don't know me. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Sims, and I'm a minister here at Excel Church. Um, I have a wife, Asia, wife of 17 years, <laughs> you know. Um, got a son. Jeff, 17 years old, and then also got another son that's 10 years old. Um, we've been up in the Jacksonville area for now about 11, 11, 11 12 years. You know, we're originally from Orlando, Florida. Um, and it, it, was, it, was, it was a reason how we ended up in, in Jacksonville. So I'm going to start off the service just by sharing a little bit of my testimony, and then we're going to uh, get into the Word of God. I really believe that God has something powerful for y'all. And part of my testimony is, is, is rooted in, in the message as far as it's kind of like, kind of like the start it off, you know what I'm saying? Because you're going to hear in my testimony what got me to where I am today, Amen. you know, and the um, main part of it is what I've been confessing over my life or what I was confessing over my life. So like I said, we were originally from Orlando. Um, what, what brought us to Jacksonville, because uh, when I was in Orlando, when we stayed in Orlando, you know, um, I was, you know, involved in some illegal activity. And in that illegal activity, um, you know, I was, you know, arrested because I was dealing narcotics. And in my dealings, I had to end up dealing with the police, some undercover agents. And, uh, you know, we was, you know, to discuss and buy some drugs and everything like that. So I end up getting arrested, you know, and I knew, I kind of had a feeling that they was the police, but in that life of crime that I was living, I was, you know, I, I ignored all the signs. Kind of like, you know, you know, sometimes God can give us signs, <laughs> you know, signs of where we're headed is not good for us. And sometimes in our lust and our, and our greed and our, and our pride, that's, that's a big thing. <laughs> In our pride, we ignore those signs, and we keep going on the very thing that God is trying to tell us. No, no, don't go that route. You know, so, uh, you know, I kind of ignored the signs. I was kind of blinded. You know, it wasn't clear to me that they was, but I, I kind of suspected, but I went on with the deal, and I ended up getting arrested for trafficking. They hit me with two trafficking charges, one of uh, the traffic over 38 pounds of marijuana and one for over 500 grams of cocaine. So they arrested me for those two charges and uh, booked me on a quarter million dollar bond. Now, being that that was my first felony offense, you know, my bond was reduced, you know, so I was able to bail it out. And I had an 18 month uh, trial uh, session going. Uh, after 60 days of me catching my charge, they finally changed my charge because I never possessed the drugs. I agreed to it, showed them the money, and before I can actually possess it to take it away, they came down on us too early. 
So they couldn't charge me with trafficking, but they hit me with the conspiracy to traffic. It's no different. <laughs> it's, actually, <laughs> it's actually harder to beat, really. Um, so they, cause then they just basically saying, hey, uh, you didn't actually possess it, you know, because we came down too early, but you and that person showed up to get it. <laughs> Y'all conspired to commit a crime. So they hit me with the conspiracy charge, and that's when I know it, uh, that's when I knew it was real. You know, so I really had no fight in my case. You know, uh, the whole time they wanted me to plea out, you know, to 18 years. Didn't hear nothing uh, sh shorter than that. My trial had done got to a point where I couldn't continue it no more. It was around about that 14-month range. So I had to make a decision. You know, I had to make a decision is I, if I was going to take it to trial or if I was going to plea out. You know, and um, they had me dead to the wrong, so I couldn't take it to trial, so I ended up playing out to 15 years. Um, and the reason why I did that is because they wanted me to actually try to reduce my sentence uh, to help set people up. You know, had no intentions on doing that, you know, but they said, hey, if you do this, if, if you agree to do this, we'll cut your time down based on how many transactions you complete and we'll push your sentencing, your, your sentencing off for four months, <laughs> you know. So I knew I wasn't fit to set nobody up, but I did want those four months. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went, I took those, I, I, I signed my name to 15 years in prison and a $250,000 fine with no intention on doing that, and I didn't do it at all, didn't even contact the, the police not one, one, at one point. And um, that four months came and it went. <laughs> and I went to court on a gloomy Monday morning on the docket I had 15 years that I'm about to get sentenced to. My lawyer didn't even show up in the courtroom, he sent his assistant. So I'm thinking it's customary because they had them been continuing my trial and continuing my trial and continuing watching my time, continuing my trial. So I'm thinking it's customary that, okay, you know what? I'll probably get another continuance. I'll probably tell them, you know, I just hadn't had a chance to call the police, but I'm gonna call them and we'll get it worked out. I had, I had, I had a plan, you know, <laughs> that I was gonna just tell them that. And I thought, you know, I, it was gonna happen. And so the, um, the assistant said, you know what? I asked the judge, can they continue it? Um, so he went up there and asked the judge, and the judge said, nope, um, we will do sentence in a day. So, of course, you know I am extremely nervous at this point because I know I signed up for 15 years. This is not, this, this, this is a real document saying that you plead not to 15 years. If you do what we ask you to do, Maybe we can cut this down for you. But if you don't do what we're asking you to do, you've already agreed that we're sending you to prison for 15 years. So you, you, <laughs> you, they probably had anvils, an anvils in my shoes. I, my feet were so heavy walking up to that, that, that little podium. And I wanted the judge to say one thing. Do you have anything to say before sentencing? <laughs> and guess what? The judge said that one thing. Do you have anything to say before sentence? And I gave her my little three-minute spiel, you know, poured out to her, hey, I had my wife in the courtroom. My little son, Jeff, was two years old at the time. He was actually down in the courtroom daycare. Um, had my mom, had my dad, had my sister, and I had my friend. This was my best friend. Um, he was there. And he hadn't come to not one of my court appearances to that morning. And I knew when I seen him, he beat me up. I said, man, something not right. <laughs> but he was in there. So I, I played on that. I said, hey, I got my family. I got family support. They done been here through this whole time. I never had no felonies, this and that. And I told that judge, I said, if you send me to prison for 15 years, I won't make it. And I wasn't saying that in the sense of I was... I was go get abused or I was just gonna, I wasn't saying that in that sense. I'm saying this like I got my mom here, I got my dad here, I got my wife here, I got my sister here, I got my friend here, I got my two-year-old son down in, 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 in the courtroom daycare and I don't have no felonies. 
So if you send me 21 years, 21, 20, 22, 21, 22, 22 years old, if you send me to prison that got all this going for him, you're not helping me by doing that and sending me to prison for 15 years. It's an injustice. I ain't tell it was an injustice, but I'm just telling her that. <laughs> You're going to spoil a good apple. And by the grace of God, <laughs> I believe she, she heard something in that because after I gave my testimony to her, she called up the state, called up my lawyer to the, to the, to the podium, to the, whatever the thing just sit on, and they had a conversation. And I, I could see the state, you know, because you know the, the, the state ain't for you. I ain't, I'm not saying that in the in a, in a, the talk, but you know, they, 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 they have one job is to win the case, you know. So they, I could see them pointing back, like complaining, like you know, like they rebuttaling against what the judge was saying. And the judge, I could see her shit just shaking her head with so much sympathy, like I'm not giving him all that time. Now what the thing was is because I, it was a trafficking charge. My charge was a mandatory, meaning that the judge had no authority over my time. The state had the power in their hands, and the state had to agree. Because if the judge were to overrule the state, the state can come back and appeal it, and they'll win it in appeals court because the law states if you commit this charge, it's a mandatory sentence. There's no negotiation. So they went back and forth, and she finally said, Mr. Sims, I got some good news. So when I heard good news, I'm thinking, I'm finna go home, you know? <laughs> you know? But she said, you know, uh, the state has agreed to forego the, ma the mandatory of 15 years and give you the lowest possible sentence that we can give you, which is 69 months in the Department of Correction. So that was, <laughs> you know, I heard the amens out there, but in the courtroom, I wasn't like amen. I was like, <laughs> I... I I had to ask her a question. I said, when you say uh, Department of Correction, is that, is that probation? <laughs> and she said, no, that's prison. At that point, they had to carry out the courtroom. So I, I, I didn't faint because that was my first time here in less than 15 years. So she sentenced me to 69 months in Department of Correction, when I got up the road, I found out that they sentenced me exactly to what I scored out to. So fast forward, I get up the road, start doing my time and stuff like that. I rededicated my life back to God in the, in the, in the, county, in the county jail, you know, because I had this thing in mind that, okay, I've heard miraculous testimonies of people going to prison and getting right out, you know, because they serving God, they doing this and stuff. So I had a, a, a mindset to say, okay, if I serve God, if I, if, I, if I do this, maybe he'll miraculously let me, let me go. And me and her was in on it, <laughs> you know? So, we, you know, so, you know I, I, I rededicated my life and this and that, got up the road, started reading my word, going to every church ser service, had her send me this book and that book, because I was reading the word because it was just an action. It was just like, okay, I have to pray. I, I cannot curse. I cannot talk a certain way. I cannot uh, drink anything. I cannot smoke. I can't, I can't look into no magazines. I can't. It's like I was living. I was like the rich young ruler. I was carrying out the law perfectly. And reading the word was one of them. Because I felt like that's what I had to do to, to please God, to make sure that he's going to see everything that I'm doing, my righteous acts, and he's going to bless me and miraculously let me go. And we'll believe in God for 90 days. <laughs> And we put an appeal in, thinking we're going to get the reduction of the sentence because we praying and we fasting and we this and we that. We're not even seeing each other. We're like, nope, we're not, we not going to come see each other because we know you getting out. Such, 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 such. So for a while, she, she didn't even come. We was in agreement. No, don't come see me because I'm coming home. That thing went in and came back. Denied. <laughs> but that taught me something. Because when the denial came back, it didn't shake me, you know. It didn't, it didn't throw me off course. And it taught me something. Because when she told me, you know, I was just like, it did? All right, that's okay. We're gonna keep praying, keep believing. And after I got off the phone with her, I went back to my bunk, got on my bunk, and started reading the Word. See, the Word had, <laughs> Like the Bible says, it will not return unto him void. 
like he said, it would not return unto him void. That's, and I heard, I was out of town when Pastor preached last week, but when I went back and listened to his message on replay about confessing and declaring the word of God, living it and, and having a victorious life by confessing the word of God, living and confessing to have a victorious life, I say, that's it. <laughs> That's it. That's me. Because that word going in, I thought I'm just doing something customary to please God. But that word was having an effect on my life. <laughs> it was having an effect on my life. And guess what? That effect endured. <laughs> that effect endured. So fast forward. You know, I had them been to three different counts, you know, uh, no two, and then I had spent the night at one of another one, spent another couple of weeks at another one. But I ended up at Lottie, Lottie Correctional Institution, which was a faith-based institution. And at Lottie, you know, I was still getting the word, doing this and that, and I, and I, I, would, I, I got so far into the word that I got religious. And I got to pick it up now. I got religious. So I wasn't going to the church services, but I was getting the word on my bunk. But it was evident that the word of God was at work in my life because people could see it. Because people would come up and say, hey, man, it's something different about you. Are you like a Christian or something? <laughs> you know, but then one person came up to me and said, man, how are you a Christian? I see you on the word on the, on the bunk getting your word, but I don't never see you in church. But because I was paying attention to what everybody else was doing, <laughs> And I thought, man, they, they wouldn't, how you go do this and do that and then go into church and lift your hands and stuff like that? I said, I don't want to be no part of that. I can get the church on my bunk. But when he told me that, when he said, man, how you a Christian and you don't go to church? God spoke to me and said, man, you witnessing no matter what you're doing. <laughs> and he said, you can't worry about what people is doing in the church and how they living in and this and that. He said, let me worry about that. But he said, there are some things in that church. And like Pastor said, it's some things that you're getting out of that word that you're going to go down to that church and it's going to confirm what you're getting. <laughs> and he said, you can't even pay attention to the preachers. Yeah. He, said because, he said, because no matter how they're living or how you think they're living, I am endorsing the word of God to come out of their mouth to bless my people. Yeah. So there are nuggets that I need you to go up there and get. And guess what? Didn't miss a church service after that. <laughs> you know? But I'm going to this church service and everything like that, and that's how I came in contact with uh, my former church, and now we excel church, praise God. Um, but because they started coming, as a matter of fact, it was our great elders, Elder, Elder, Elder Darnell was the very first word that I heard from this, from this lineage. <laughs> the very first. Praise God. But so during my time, let me fast forward, I'm going to get to the message. During my time, there was trials and tribulations. Of course, I'm going to have that in five years in prison. So as I'm getting the word and I'm getting filled up with the word, confessions became real big to me. <laughs> Confessing and declaring the word of God became real big to me. Matter of fact, <laughs> It moved from me just having head knowledge of the word, and it moved from the word just only being in my, and being in my heart, but that it moved to me just confessing the word of God out of my mouth because what I was going through, what I was experiencing and stuff like that, it, it, no action couldn't, couldn't, could not deal with it. I had to get myself built up by confessing and declaring the word of God over my life. I was confessing to God what I wanted to see in my life in prison. <laughs> I was confessing to God what I want to see in my marriage in prison. I was confessing to God what I want my, relation, my relationship with my children to be like, well, my son at the time, in prison. I was, the, I was confessing to God what I wanted to see happen. And what I was expecting God to do, I was declaring and confessing these things out of my mouth. And guess what? It carried me. <laughs> it carried me. It carried me through prison, <laughs> and when I came home, it carried me out of prison, because guess what? The confessions didn't stop. The confessions didn't cease. <laughs> so that's just a little bit about me. <laughs> but I want to I I I let y'all know, 
that victory is yours. <laughs> victory is yours. <laughs> victory is yours. It's, some, it's somebody in here, some, or some people, somebody on live stream, that need victory. <laughs> that need victory. You know, no matter where you at, <laughs> I want you to know that victory is yours today. Amen. Victory is yours. God is going to give you the keys to victory because God is still good. You know, here's a word for you. God has been good. <laughs> God has been good to all of us. And we say that, especially when we seem like the good has ceased. It's like, man, you know what? I can't complain because guess what? God has been good. But you know what? God is still good. <laughs> God is still good. And I'm here to tell you, God is still El El Yon, the Most High God. <laughs> He's still El Shaddai, God Almighty. He's still Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. He's still the great I am. God is still good. God is still good. So I want y'all to be encouraged today, <laughs> this evening. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the message. Let's go to Psalms 34. Psalms 34. Like I was saying, <laughs> when I was in prison, what, what, what got me on to confessions is when I really start experiencing turmoil. I had to declare some things. I had to declare what I was expecting God to work in me and work out of me. <laughs> you know, I had to declare some things. <laughs> and that created victory in my life. That created victory in my life. That created victory. I, I go out to the prison to the guys and mentor, and I tell them how much peace, you know, in the midst of all those circumstances, how much peace. I'm blown away by how much peace I was able to walk in in the things of God, being in that place. And it's all because of what was coming out of my mouth. <laughs> it was all because. Now, getting the word is good. Being filled with the word is good. Having the word in your head, having the word in your heart, that is good. That is good. That's, that's, that's building you up. But that word has an effect when it's released. <laughs> that's when it goes to affecting your life. <laughs> so the psalmist says right here, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I don't know why I am sensing this. But there's some people in here, somebody in here that needs to hear this and bless the Lord at all times. What that means. If it's going good, bless the Lord. If it's going bad, bless the Lord. If you was at a certain point <laughs> and you done seen some digression and you're not at that point no more and it's starting to create some menu starting to create some doubt, starting to create some fear, guess what? Bless the Lord. <laughs> Bless the Lord. And what, up, what, what else we have trouble with sometimes is sometimes we make it easy to bless the Lord when things are not going good. What do I mean by that? Meaning that sometimes, like I said, man, what, dr what drove me to praising God out of my mouth, confessing the word of God over my life, it wasn't because things were just going good. Some, something hit my life. <laughs> Some was after my peace. Some was after my joy. Some was after my, uh, my wholeness. Some was after me. And because I wanted a way out of it, because I wanted to see God work in me, his supernatural strength, what I started doing? I started declaring. I started digging in the word. Start, I mean, I was reading that word and gathering promises, writing them down. I had index cards, and I would wake up. I would go through those things, and I would declare those things over my life. Why? Because I wanted victory. <laughs> so sometimes we, 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 we tend to bless the Lord when something hit our life. But this, this, this psalms is saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. What it says, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. <laughs> his God almightiness 
shall continually be in my mouth. <laughs> His God providing this shall continually be in my mouth. <laughs> His most highness, <laughs> and I'm making these words up, but y'all get it, <laughs> shall continually be in my mouth. <laughs> hey, as long as you get it, that's all that matters. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, like I said, confessing the word of God got me out of prison and got me to where I am, or uh, put it like this, I can get a little transparent, try not to be too, too transparent, but just, a, just get a little transparent. I could be, y'all could be, I could be preaching to myself here, because but I've taken my eyes off some things, taken my hands off some things that I know to do, <laughs> that I know to do. And I let some things get away from me, you know. And in this, in this, it's starting to create something. You know, it's starting to create, that's why, <laughs> it's starting to create something. It's starting to create a little subtle, little subtle doubt, <laughs> L- little subtle fear, yeah. mm. little, little subtle concern. Mm-hmm. Still, still praying, mm-hmm. still getting the word. But I'm going to tell you what, what, what I, what I, I let some things slip, and I'm going to tell you what else I let slip because. Things was going so well for me. And that's how, the, that's how I can be sometimes. <laughs> that's how I can be sometimes. Like, like, like they say, the, sometimes the most dangerous place is the day after victory or something like that. <laughs> because it's easy to, you know, it's easy to kind of. That's why I, I try to tell my son, because he played football, you know, he played quarterback. When you go out there and you have a highlight moment, Recalibrate. <laughs> Recalibrate. Come back down. Recalibrate. Sometimes I try to yell it. Recalibrate the reminder. Why? Because just when things are going good, <laughs> that's when you can kind of kind of come off your 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 your, your pursuit. <laughs> you know, your your posture can change. You can you can start just letting some things slip. And that's it's kind of what I did. You know, I seen that, seen how my posture towards things changed a little bit as things was going well. Now, this wasn't overnight. <laughs> you know, the enemy don't work like that. <laughs> this thing was slow and subtle to the point where it almost goes unnoticed. <laughs> so, pastor started preaching on renewing your mind. He started that a month or two ago, and he's still kind of in it. He just, you know, adding these sub-series to it. That's why I, I, that's why I love this, this ministry. It just don't stop. It just, it just don't stop at one, one sermon. It, it, it's like, okay, I'm on page two. Man, we're going to pick up with this next week, and we'll be on that thing for three months. <laughs> but so when he was re- preaching on renewing in mind, God had spoke to me and said, and I wrote in my notes, I had to re- I had rededicated my life. I said, I have to renew my mind to the things of God. I have to renew my mind to the word of God. And out of that, what I start doing again, start writing down confessions. See, that's what I had let slip. <laughs> that's what I had let slip. I was still reading my word, still studying my word. Still waking up in the morning praying, you know, but my declarations, confessing the word of God over my life, kind of slipped a little bit. <laughs> so that's why this psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my, li- on my lips. So when Pastor said living and confessing the victorious life, it was confirmation of where I was trending back towards. 
because like I said, I had to start, I said, okay, I, I know what's happened. I got to renew my mind to the things of God. I got to renew my mind to the, to, the, to the word of God. I got to renew my mind to my family. I got to renew my mind to these things. But I have to start. I, I, if there was a moment in time in my life, and this is what I'm telling myself, there was a moment in time in my life where confessions was, was boom, 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 just walking, just confessing, just walking and confessing. And my life was flourishing. Not saying that it's flourishing no more, but I'm just saying, like I said, I let some things slip. And I said, I got to get these confessions back. I got to get these promises of God back. I got to get these declarations back. I got to get them back down on paper. I got to get them back down in my spirit. So when certain things come up, I have the ammo that I need to declare the word of God over my life. Why? Because I want victory. <laughs> I want victory. Here's a note. Confessions is my key to having victory. Confessions is my key to having victory. What I said, now, when that, that, that trial and all them circumstances hit my life in prison, confessions was my key yeah. to having victory. Yeah. And <laughs> confessions is my key to keeping victory. <laughs> confessions is my key to having victory, and confessions is my key to keeping victory. So, the title of today's message is Confessing Victory Over Defeat. Confessing Victory Over Confeat. Here's another note. What we continually confess over our lives will be the determining factor of how much victory over defeat we will have. It is what we continually confess what we continually declare over our lives, that's going to determine how much victory over defeat we will have. Somebody say, oh, I, I, I thought you just get the word and get filled up with the word. Yeah, you get filled up with the word. But that, like the Bible said, that word of God, when it is sent, <laughs> it will produce an effect in your life. You got to send that word. <laughs> you got to send that word. Um, let's go to, if you would, please, let's go to Proverbs chapter 18. Now, I'm not, pastor, I know pastor has a lot to say on this. I, I'm believing this because he said he had seven pages of notes. And um, I don't know how many, but I know he's going to continue on this. So I'm just keeping the seat warm. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. I'm just keeping the seat warm. Uh, to, 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 he, to he come back in the pulpit and keep blessing us with that word. But I seen something in Proverbs chapter 18 that, I, that, that caught my attention. And we're going to go to verse, we're going to go to verse 20. And media, if you could have this ready in the message when I ask for it, that would be perfect. But it says in verse 20, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall, be, shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. <laughs> Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So let's, let's do this. So we're going to say victory. We're going to call that life. And we're going to say defeat. And we're going to call that death. Let's do a little, little exercise here. All right. So it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. See, there's a universal purpose to the tongue. <laughs> There's a universal purpose to the tongue. And that purpose is to create victory or what we call life or it can manufacture defeat or we, what we call death. It depends on how we use it. <laughs> See, with the tongue, 
it, it does things simultaneously. It just depends on how it's being used. We can bless, we can curse. <laughs> we can build up, we can tear down. How, it just depends on how we use. We can encourage and we can discourage. <laughs> Just, we can applaud and we can boo. We can inspire and we can criticize. It's just going to depend on how we use it. The tongue is no respecter of words. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to produce whatever you allow it to produce. Whatever you spew out of it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put it in action. It's not going to say, oh, that's bad. I'm not going to say that. That's, that's for you to, to, to decipher before it makes it here. <laughs> So the tongue, the tongue is a world of its own. <laughs> the Bible calls it a world of evil. But that don't mean that it's all bad. It's just saying if, if that thing get on that course, that puppet can do some damage. So, media, can we uh, get the message translation? All right. It says, words satisfy the mind. <laughs> As fruit does the stomach. You see that? Words satisfy the mind. I know I want my mind satisfied. <laughs> good talk is as, gratifi as gratifying as a good harvest. Mm -mm. Words kill. Words give life. What it says? They're either poison or fruit. What it tell you? You choose. <laughs> you choose. So that word power... <laughs> Defined as the ability to act or produce an effect. In other words, the ability to do. So when it says death and life are in the power of the tongue, it's saying it's in the ability of the tongue. In the Hebrew definition of the word power, it's pronounced as yod or yod. And that's defined as hand, like the hand of a man. I, I seen that and that was interesting. So it says... Death and life are in the hand of the tongue. <laughs> now, I want you to take a moment to picture victory, and I'm going to write some things down. Take a moment to picture victory and, and, and picture what victory looks like to you. I wrote some things down of what it looked like to me, and I'm going to put them on this board real fast. So I got salvation, of course that, holiness, praise God, peace, <laughs> that's victory. Good God Almighty. Joy. That's victory. <laughs> Purity. That's victory. Having a pure heart. Pure heart towards people. Pure heart towards things. Pure heart towards the vision. <laughs> mm. Wholeness. That's victory. And that list can go on and on. Now, picture defeat. Here's, here's what defeat looked like to me. Unsaved. I don't want to be there again. Fear. <laughs> Fear. That thing. It's like poison. Sadness. Loneliness. These are just some things that I that I wrote down. <laughs> as a picture of victory and a picture of defeat. Now, <laughs> somebody say, well, why you ain't got a house on there? Why you ain't got your F-250 or the round 2500 on there? That's, that don't define victory. <laughs> that don't define victory. Why? Because a person can be living in a one-bedroom house <laughs> with, a, with a car full of instructions. And have all the peace in the world. <laughs> That's victory. They can have all the joy in the world. They can be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. Just loving life. Pure heart towards everybody. Walking in wholeness in every part of their life. And they're in that one bedroom apartment with a car with instructions. And they loving it. Because that car with instructions might just be a temporary thing. They might just be saving for something. <laughs> And then they're going to hit you with it. <laughs> but, you know, so you, 
why, why you ain't got that on there? Because victory is not defined. It's just like somebody could have a, a four-bedroom house. I mean, not a four-bedroom, but a, a four-story a four house. <laughs> have four cars, plenty of money in the bank. But if they walking in fear, that's not victory. <laughs> if they sad, no peace, no joy, that's not victory. So the thing about these two, victory in life or defeat in death, these are all dictated and put in motion and produced by the tongue or by what we confess <laughs> over our life. That's another S. That's, that's, that's the comp comparison. The significant, here's a note, the significant dynamic of the tongue is that it houses the power to create all of this, <laughs> all of this. It says that if, if, if that word power, I, just, it, says, it says it's like the hand of a man. <laughs> so, and we can see everything that the man, hands of a man built. We see houses that it built, cars that it built, buildings that it built, you know, monumental statues and all this stuff. We can see that. And it was God had given them the ability to work with their hands, to imagine what they can see and build it <laughs> with their hands. It says the tongue <laughs> possessed the same hand to build these things in our life. <laughs> it also possessed the same hand to build these things in our life. It's just a matter of what we're going to choose. <laughs> So just like, like my Minister Bailey said, he said honoring God. I, you know, I was listening to what he was uh, doing when he was doing an offering message. He said honoring God is the pathway to our prosperity. <laughs> Declaring the word of God over our life, confessing the word of God over our life is the pathway to our victory in life. Just simple. <laughs> just simple. Just easy. I had to renew my mind to it. I had to renew my mind to it. Real fast, let's, let's, let's turn to James chapter 3. I seen something else interesting concerning this tone. See, our, our confessions, <laughs> once we understand that power that we have in speaking and declaring, Man, that should excite us <laughs> to get on our confessions. <laughs> that should inspire us and motivate us to begin to declare that word of God. Some of us might need to go back home and just, just, just remember some of the things that we used to declare and write them down again. Like, I, I'm on this thing right now. If I see a promise that pertains to me, which all of them do, but when that, that just jumps out me and says, write it down, I got it in this notepad, and we, if, we go, if we get a chance to it, I'm going to go through some of them to, to, to give y'all the as, as ammo. But I'm just writing them down, writing the verses down, writing them down, and I'm declaring them in the morning. I'm declaring them in the morning. Why? Because I want to see this <laughs> in my life. Not... <laughs> Not, not, not well, because something hit my life or I'm feeling, I'm feeling bad because of this or whatever, but I want to see this now and I want it to remain. I want to get back on course with declaring the word of God over my life so I can see victory being in my life. So James chapter 3. That, no, on time be moving. <laughs> Don't it, Deacon Nina? <laughs> that word... Deacon Nina preached. I can't. She said two words. And that thing almost jumped through the ceiling. <laughs> she said, begin again. I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to begin again. <laughs> I am going to begin again. <laughs> Man. All right, verse 3. James chapter 3, verse 3. It says, behold. We put bits in horses' mouths, and they obey us. <laughs> and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are, and are driven of fierce winds, 
yet are they turned about with a very small hymn. Well, wherever the governor tells it. Even so, the tongue, because it's, it's, it's comparing the tongue to things that we use to steer things, <laughs> to steer them in a certain direction. It's, 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 just, it's just so paramount to, to declaring and confessing the word of God over our life because it's telling us, it's, it's, it's giving us a, a clear example of what our tongue is for. <laughs> It says it's going to steer our lives in a certain direction. We just need to make sure we choose in which direction we want that tongue to steer it in. But I've seen something interesting in it. It says, let me find my place again. It says, so even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindle. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. When that thing gets going, if it's going in the wrong direction, that's why I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big fan of if you don't want it to happen, don't say it. My wife tell me she, if she have a headache and she use these words, I have a really bad headache. I'll be like, hold on, hold on, hold on, sweetie, sweetie. Do you have a really bad headache or do you just have a, a, little, a little headache? And she's getting better. She'll be like, I got, I, I got a headache. Okay, say that. Because <laughs> a really bad headache tells me I can't move. I'm stuck in the bed. I, it's, I'm blurry. I, I need to go to the... That's what a really bad headache tells me. I, and I am real big on being pacific on what you are declaring. You know, especially if it has nothing to do with this. <laughs> because if you don't want it to happen, do not say it. <laughs> Where was that? Okay, so it says, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed by mankind. So it's saying that even though we can put those bits in horses' mouths and they got a little thing that turns the ship and it compared to tongue, saying the tongue is just like those things, the tongue is a little bit different in, in a certain element because those things, when you, when, you, when you steer a horse, if you tell them to go left, you could, you could decide, you know what, nah, come, come back this way. Then you can say, nah, nah, come back this way and, and let's go straight. You know, you can always recourse and retrack and, 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 and backtrack and take away. You, you, you can always do that. Same thing with the ship. If the ship is at dock and you say we're going to set sail and you go out 15 meters into the ocean, you know what I'm saying? You say, you know what? Nah, we ain't going nowhere. Let's go ahead and go back to our starting point. And boom, no harm, no foul. But it says, so it says you can tame all those things. You can control that. But, it's, but what, 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 what the scripture says is that the tongue is just like that. It's going to go wherever. Yeah, the tongue is. But it says in verse 8 that the tongue can no man tame. Let's look at that word tame real fast. It says uh, tame. The definition is to curb or restrain. The Hebrew word for it is demazo, which is to subdue or to control. <laughs> when the tongue is at work, the Bible says no man can control it or, res or restrain it, which means however we choose to use it, it is going to begin to set in motion those things that we start to declare. <laughs> it's going to set those things in motion. So if something fly out of your mouth, you can't say, oh, no, no, give me that back. Don't, don't, don't. You can't do that. <laughs> if, 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 if you start declaring something out of your mouth, that's what it's saying by the tongue can't be contained. It's not saying that you can't control what you say. It's saying that once you say it, you can't recourse. You can't retract. If when it comes out, <laughs> it, it has an effect. You say something hurtful to somebody, you can't say, oh, you know what? I didn't mean to say that. It done done. It's, it, 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 by the grace of God, you know, you forgive and they go forgive you. But there's a scar. <laughs> there's, there's damage. Why? Because it has came out of your mouth. You can't take that back. It's, it, once, once it comes out, it, 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 you can't control it no more. So that's what it's saying that when you when you release this thing, you can't tame it. Yeah, you can tell the horse to go this way. And if you say, nah, we ain't going that way. Come on back. You can do that. You can tell the ship to go out. But when you say, come on back, you, you, it's going to come back. But when you tell that tongue to say this, <laughs> you better hope it's blessing. 
because it's going to begin to set in motion what you are declaring. And the only thing, the only thing that is going to retract it or override it is the grace of God. <laughs> and and if, if you start using that thing in a way that's <laughs> manufacturing this in your life or setting in motion this in your life, you better get on your knees and pray to God for crop failure on that seed because that thing is starting to begin something in motion. It's starting to have an effect in your life. <laughs> All right, seven minutes. Let's go to Romans 10 real fast. Go to Romans 10. This will be the last scripture. Time. Uh, this is, you know, my wife, she asks me, Jeff, you okay? And I'm quick to say, yeah. And she'd say these two words. And she know, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so, Spiritually, religiously, I'm like, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. I kind of still do that, but I am getting better at trying to be transparent and really let her know where I'm at. <laughs> really let her know where I'm at, you know, because I, I, want, I want this <laughs> in my life. I want this in my life. And I know the only way to get it is going to be based on what I'm confessing out of my mouth. So Romans 10, we're going to start at verse 8. And media, I'm going to need this one in the message when we get to it. But it says, What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. The word of faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. And confession is the thing that puts that faith into action. <laughs> so it says, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Notice it said, confess with thy mouth. The Lord Jesus. And shall believe in, that heart, in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Now watch this. This is big. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So you can believe, you can have, you could be filled <laughs> with the word of God and believe that God is going to do or uh, work out these things in your life. You can be filled with the word of God to, 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 to believe that. And this scripture says, for with the heart man believe unto righteousness and, 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 and the, word of, the word of faith which we are hearing that we come into church and get, that we're getting in the morning when we're reading our Bible, that we're getting in the afternoon when we're reading our Bible, and we're getting in the night when we read our Bible. That word is building up faith in God. But if it's just sitting in our head and in our heart, it's just there. It's just there. It's there. It's ready. It's, it's, it's in there. It's ready to be used. It's available. But it says a man only with the heart, he only believes unto righteousness. But what it says, and with the mouth, confession is made until salvation. So he's saying that there is no action to what you believe. My shirt open. I feel a little breeze. <laughs> he said, he said, there is no action that's going to be set in motion based off what you believe only. <laughs> what it says, it says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made 
until salvation. So we can believe God all day for salvation, but it says, hey, until you make that confession, it ain't happening. We can believe God all day for holiness, but like it says, until you make that confession, this is not getting worked out in your life. This is not getting, like, like, so, so if somebody say, oh man, I'm getting the word of God, I'm full of the word of God, this and that, and I got peace. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why you got peace. Because somewhere in you getting the word of God and being filled with the word of God, sometimes almost automatically as you are filled with something, you're going to declare it. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to declare it. If you, have, if you have a certain expectation for something, like my wife, I'm going to tell you, my wife, she knows what this child is going to be. And I cannot get her to stop confessing. And guess what? I cannot get her to stop telling everybody about it. Every single thing that this guy has going on, every accolade, everything, every this, every, she, she is gung-ho. Oh, yeah, Jeff is going to, he did this. Oh, yeah, he's about to go such such, man. This was a blessing. Jeff had this. Jeff got invited. And every, and, 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 but it's good. It's good. Why? Because she is full of that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good thing. So when it's in you, when it's in you to the full like that, it almost automatically going to pour out of you. <laughs> Media, can we get it in the message translation real fast? <sighs> so it says, so, uh, yep, that's what I want. So what exactly what Moses was saying? No, so what exactly was Moses saying? The word that saves is right here. As near as the tongue in your mouth, as close as the heart in your chest is the word of faith. Oh, scroll down a little bit. One more. Oh, go back up. <laughs> hmm. Go down. I'm sorry. Go down one more. That's it? <laughs> That's the message? All right, go back up. <laughs> okay, that's it, yeah. So the word that saves, that says 4 through 10, but okay. The word that saves is right here. As near as the tongue in your mouth, as close as the heart in your chest, is the word of faith that welcomes God to go to work. <laughs> what it says, it's the word of faith that welcomes God to go to work. So it's not just faith alone. <laughs> yeah, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God so it's 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 equally important for us to get the word of God because that's how we get the faith by hearing the word of God by reading the word of God by meditating on the word of God but it is when uh, uh, what it says go back one it says it is the word of faith that welcomes God to go to work and set things right for us so it's it's not just having faith that i got salvation it's not just having faith that i got holiness it's not just having peace that i got i mean uh, faith that i got peace it's not just having uh faith that i got joy it's not just having faith that i got purity or wholeness it's the word that i'm declaring that that's based on my faith that i have It's the faith coming down through coming out of my heart, deciphering it through my mind and coming out of my tongue. That is how I am establishing salvation, holiness, peace, joy, purity, wholeness. This is how I am establishing victory in my life. All right. So real fast. Give y'all some. Just some. Could I just really feel like some people need some confession scriptures? So if you want to write some of these down, I'm just going to share some of them with you. Psalms 37, verse 25 and 26. I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. If, you, if, if provision is one of your words <laughs> and you're righteous, well, you, you de declare this. It says, he is ever merci merciful and lendeth, and his seed shall be blessed. <laughs> We all know this popular scripture, Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So in any time you in a, a, a time in your life where you need strength, say, wait on, wait on the Lord. Just declare, I, I, I'm going to wait on the Lord, and the Lord, you shall renew my strength. It said, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, 
uh, well, of course, we know Jeremiah 29, 11. <laughs> you know, if we ever feeling like, you know, what plan and purpose is, is God's plan and purpose is a good plan and purpose for our life. Jeremiah 29, 11. That was very paramount, paramount for me. Um, when our faith and our strength is small, um, we can go to Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14. These are just some of the stuff that I, I went back and just wrote, wrote down. Uh, here's a good one. Um, you know, when we face with, uh, I text this to my son when he was up at the Nike Elite 11. I think I put it in the letter. It says, the Lord God is my strength. Habakkuk 319, the Lord God is my strength. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. He will make me to walk upon, I mean, he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places. We all know the po uh, popular scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That's Philippians 4.13. Now, just, just throwing some out there. Um, uh, give you one more. Um, here's here's a good one. Um, Psalm thirty five nine, and my soul shall be joyful in the Lord; it shall rejoice in His salvation. So when there's something like if if if, if you're trying to find joy somewhere, just be just be joyful that man, I'm saved. <laughs> I'm saved. At the end of the day, I'm saved. You know, at the end of the day, I'm saved. So that's just some things I want to share with y'all. Was y'all blessed by the word? Yeah, man, and I, 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 I really pray that y'all got something out of the word tonight. Wow, what a powerful word. Thank you for watching. And please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. You can also follow us on social media. You can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For more information about our ministry, please visit our website at www.xlfl.org. And be sure to click the notification bell to be notified each time we upload a video to YouTube. Now, go excel in God and go excel in life.